quite a while ago. I made a video on how I thought the M3 Medium was the most underrated tank of World War II. You guys seem to like that quite a lot, so I wanted to make similar videos, but I never really got around to it. Until now, that is. This time, though, we're going to be taking a look at a pair of World War II tanks that I think are overrated. Fans of German tanks will be happy to know there's only one German tank on this list, and it isn't the Tiger or Panther. Before we get into that, though, I want to take a second to talk about my sponsor. I've partnered with Apex Gaming to make a line of pre-built gaming PCs, so if you're looking to upgrade, they might be worth checking out. You can use my username as a discount code on checkout. Link is in the description and comments. With that out of the way, let's get back to the video. The first tank likely isn't much of a surprise, given it's probably the thumbnail of this video. The Char B1 French Heavy Tank is an odd choice at first glance, since people usually aren't big fans of World War II French tanks, but you would be surprised at how much praise this thing gets. The B1 was designed during the early 20s, so you can imagine that by the time it was used in World War II, it was fairly antiquated. Since the B1 was built following the experiences of World War I, it was pretty long and had rhomboid-ish style tracks, which would have made crossing trenches much easier. This turned out to be a liability in World War II though. Its armament layout was pretty unconventional, having a 75mm howitzer in the hole and a 47mm anti-tank gun in the turret. The howitzer was supposed to take out bunkers, while the anti-tank gun would obviously take out other tanks. The B1 was very well armored for the time, with the B1 biz having 60mm of sloped armor on the front. This made it pretty difficult for German tanks to take it out, which definitely contributes towards its reputation. What contributes the most, though, is one particularly harsh battle Char participated in. Stone was a hotly contested French village. In total, the village would switch hands 17 times. In one engagement, a single Char B1 commanded by one lieutenant below destroyed a total of 13 German tanks. While this is extremely impressive, why do you think a single Char B1 had to fight so many tanks by itself? The answer is pretty simple. Prior to that fight, a lot of Char B1s from a supporting unit were either knocked out or disabled, and most of the tanks in Below's unit were missing due to other reasons. Below caught the column bunched up on a narrow street, where the Germans became trapped by the wrecks of their own tanks. In a lot of ways, the Char B1 is pretty similar to the Tiger in terms of how it is perceived. It had great armor and powerful weapons, and it had some engagements where it took out a ton of tanks, so it has this reputation as an amazing vehicle. With the B1 though, people rarely take into account how awful it was for the crew. Given the armament, you'd think it'd have a crew of at least 6, right? Nope. It had a crew of 4. The driver was responsible for aiming and firing the 75mm, which was in a horizontally fixed mount. The commander had to coordinate the tank while also loading and firing the 47mm. This led to a lot of crew overload. The B1 also wasn't the most reliable tank, with the steering system breaking down a fair bit. The B1 was a bit of a tough nut to crack for the German army, but they didn't do much to slow them down. Second, there's the Tiger II. I doubt anyone watching this video doesn't know what the King Tiger is, but I guess it doesn't hurt to recap anyway. The Tiger II was, obviously, a German heavy tank built as a fallout to the original Tiger. Unlike the original Tiger, though, the Tiger II used slope frontal arm and a redesigned turret. The 150mm upper front plate, angled at around 50 degrees, gave a line of sight thickness of around 220mm. The turret face was also fairly thick at 185mm. Armed with a long 88mm cannon, the Tiger II certainly wasn't lacking firepower or protection. When you take a look at its automotive performance though, that's where you start to run into trouble. The Tiger II used the HL230 engine, which originally developed 700 horsepower at 3000 RPM. Soon after the HL230 started to see active use in early Panthers, it became apparent that the HL230 had a lot of issues. Most notably, it had issues with fuel leaks and carburetor backfires. In an effort to curb this behavior, they were derated to 2500 RPM. This meant that in the Tiger II, it developed 540 horsepower. This would give the Tiger II an abysmal power to rate ratio of 7.9 horsepower per metric ton. On top of all this, engine issues persisted. The suspension and transmission also proved to be fairly troublesome. Combine this with a lack of spare parts and low production numbers, and it's not hard to see why the Tiger II had very little effect on the war as a whole. The original Tiger, while also being troubled mechanically, was still a fairly good tank when it was working properly, and it ended up getting a lot of work done. The Tiger II was imposing, sure, but it didn't end up doing much in the end. That's pretty much all there is to say. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.